going to talk about the main new features. Um, so y'all kind of seen in the last model some of the UI changes. Um, what did y'all think? Like it? Don't like it? Kind of like it? That's cool. um, so the new features that we're going to talk about are virtual desktops. Um, virtual desktops are actually not a new concept. Um, they've been in existence with Linux for um, ages. Um, and Windows is finally brought them to Windows. Or Microsoft is brought to Windows. So that's cool. Cortana. Um, does anybody know who Cortana is? Siri. Siri. Siri, right? You know where she came from? How do you know? Sorry. Um, do you know where like her origin is from? Where she came from? Pittsburgh. Is she from Pittsburgh? <laughs> <laughs> she's actually, um, if y'all played Halo on the Xbox, she's actually from Halo. So since Microsoft made Halo, they brought, she's an artificial intelligence, um, she's like computer ways in the, in the game or whatever. Um, so they brought her to real life, which is kind of cool, real life being artificial intelligence. So, um, <laughs> use that loosely, but it's kind of interesting to know the history. What's cool about it is actually the uh, voice actor who was in the game is still the voice actor, or the voice of Cortana now, so uh, pretty cool. Uh, the next big um, feature is Microsoft Edge, which is their new modern browser. Uh, Microsoft <coughs> is, um, we heard yesterday that they are still continuing to develop IE 11, um, but that is definitely an arguable um, statement. So um, they're, yes, they are still developing it as far as security fixes and stuff, but as far as features and stuff, they're they're done with their next form. Um, so we'll talk about what Edge is and what's new there. Um, and then there's a new feature called Continuum. Um, and I have a couple of videos that will explain that because I can't show it all exactly, but I want you all to be aware of it. Um, so with that, let's jump in. Uh, virtual desktops. So virtual desktops are um, Essentially, it's kind of easier to show you than it is to explain. Um, but a lot of times when you have um, many apps open, you kind of want to organize them. So virtual desktops give you a way to do that. So you'll notice on the start um, taskbar that there's this little tasks, task view button. And when you click that, you can see your open apps, right? Well, down here in the bottom right-hand corner is a new desktop. Button. So when you click that, you can see that there's a new desktop that comes up. And when you click out of it, now all of the apps that I had open are no longer open. But they are still um, active just in the other desktop. And I can switch back, and now my apps are there again. Um, so it's kind of neat, um, just a way to organize um, the stuff that you're working on. So for example, the best example that I have is like from my own personal experience is I'll use virtual desktops to, I'll have my SCCM stuff open where I'm managing applications and stuff like that, but then I'll jump over to my other desktop that has all the Apple stuff because those are two separate entities and I, my, I have to be in the right frame of mind to do each one. It's hard for me to just jump ship on um, the two management consoles. So I'll try to keep those physically separate. Um, so what's neat is that there are, um, there's no limitation really on how many desktops you want. You can add as many as you want. Um, mm -hmm. You have to close them all individually, so <laughs> don't do that. Um, but it helps um, to organize your stuff. When you are, when you hover over each one, when your mouse is just hovering over each one, you can see the lists of apps that are open. And what's neat is you can even take, um, the, let's see if I can do it. It shows something different on my screen than up there. Um, so let's see. So I can take my application here that's on this desktop and I, I can actually move it over to my desktop too. So now I'm in desktop two and this application <coughs> is open. So it's, I mean, that's pretty much the extent of virtual desktops. It's just meant to help you stay organized with what you're working on. Um, there are some keyboard shortcuts. So if you do Win Windows Control left and right, you can easily switch between desktops. So that's one. It's really slim. Um, there's some additional um, shortcuts in your manual that you can go through and kind of um, play around with that. Um, what were you doing? Windows Control and then left and right arrow keys. So you can do that. Um, 
So I know I kind of went through that really fast, but that's pretty much it. It's pretty simple. So do y'all have any questions on that before I move on? The most compelling argument I've seen for desktop, because I've asked this question many times, what in the world do I have this for, was that the uh, seminar I went to today where they were doing K-12. Mm -hmm. And the an example that he gave was a teacher might have you know, her, her Google slides that she's doing and her um, uh, textbook on one desktop, mm -hmm. attack and those kinds of things administrative on another desktop, so she can immediately go, okay, now we're a student just walked up, bam, I'm okay, here's my student mode of uh, doing this, and I can switch. That's, 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 cool. that's yeah, that's a great, that's, that's a great one. It's also stuff. that I guess that brings up, in my opinion, it's like, oh, they're gonna hide stuff from you too now, so be on the watch. Can you separate them? Like, if you had it like that, can and desktop two go up on the projector and desktop one stay on? The Not screen? yet, but I know that that's been a feature request to Microsoft, so I wouldn't. It wouldn't surprise me if that's coming later. But um, so that's a good. That's a good question, but not yet. So. Uh, okay. Next, Cortana. That's Cortana in real life. Um, the little circle symbol right there, that's the symbol that they use to represent Cortana. So um, if you ever see any new Microsoft applications and it says like, uh, if it's got a little Cortana symbol, symbol more than likely it's integrated somehow. Um, so you know that she's a digital personal assistant. She's there to make your life easier. It's like Siri, it's like Google Now. Um, and it, it first came on the Windows phone, um, but then they brought it to the desktop. Um, so there are, um, I think, I think there's hesitations with her as well because it's kind of creepy because you know she'll know stuff about you. It's things like um, she'll know like you can add your favorite places. Um, so if you add your home and your work, then she'll pop up every now and then. Say um, you know as it's about five o'clock and you're ready to leave, she'll say here's the traffic on your way home. Um, so she kind of learns who you are over time. Um, she is all based on machine learning at Microsoft in their data centers. Um, so she's constantly collecting data about you. Um, you have to have a Microsoft account to enable that. Um, and so you kind of just need to be aware that she's always kind of there. She's always learning who you are, but to give you the most relevant information that pertains to you at your convenience. Um, she's super smart, but she's also got a little bit of sass. Um, so if you ask her who Siri is, she'll say she's a competitor on a competitor's phone. Um, she'll do some, she'll do impressions. Um, one time if you say, um, like Cortana do an impression, she'll go uh, to infinity and beyond and shows a little Buzz Lightyear thing or something like that. Um, and then she'll do jokes too. Um, so if you ask her to tell you a joke, she'll tell you a joke. They're not always great, but they're kind of interesting. Um, so let me kind of show you a little bit about Cortana. On your search bar, um, on, on my screen, it's just the little Cortana. Um, you can see she knows my name. Um, I put that in there. She knows where I'm at, so she's giving me weather. Um, she knows in my mail that I have a flight from Austin to Dallas, and so she's putting that information right there at my fingertips so I can go and um, uh, see if I actually want to track it or not. Um, the news that I want to hear about, um, like technology business news, um, Denton, Texas local news, stuff like that, uh, Cowboys, uh, the Rangers score, so she'll do sports, she'll do um, movies, movie suggestions, or show times, she'll recommend show times for certain movies if you like those, um, and all of that is personalized. Like you can go and you can change the settings. You can say, I want to know these stock options. I don't you I don't play the stock market, so I don't care anything about stocks. So I don't get that kind of information. So you can go in through go in there and choose all of that. You do that by going into your notebook. It's called your notebook. <laughs> and she um, she kind of keeps all her information in here. Um, so you can see for like eat and drink, you can say um, give me restaurant recommendations. So every now and then she'll pull up and she'll say, oh, you, sh you haven't eaten at LSA in a while. Do you want to go to LSA? Well, of course I want to go to LSA. I love LSA. Um, it's integrated with Yelp as well. So you'll get reviews of restaurants and stuff like that. Um, so it's kind of neat. Um, again, um, it's all like packages. If you get an email for FedEx or UPS, um, 
then it will track those packages for you and you, you can do that. Um, ask her anything, you kind of can ask her anything, but she's also like a, a search bar, right? Like Google search. It's powered by Bing, so the default search engine, anytime you search for something, is going to take you to Bing. You cannot change that to Google because Cortana is powered by Bing, so just know that. Um, but it does like random things, like if I do three plus three, She'll come up and she'll tell me her ship's question. Two plus three is five. So it's calculator built in. There's various functions that she has available to you right at your fingertips. Um, so pretty neat. Um, the other thing that she can do is reminders. Um, I did this last class, um, and I said um, I said add new reminder, and I said remember to. <laughs> fix something for Vanessa. And then you can say um, a time by 4 p.m. That's a.m. I'm not working at 4 a.m. You can check it and then she'll remind you to fix something for Vanessa today at 4 p.m. right before right I leave. You. So right before I leave, Cortana <laughs> is going to remind me to do something. Now I set that reminder on here but I will get that reminder on my desktop because I'm running with us and with Cortana. So it's all synced together. Do you get it on your phone too? I, yeah, yeah, you I get it on, yeah, phone? I have a Windows phone, so I'll actually get it on my phone too. So it's actually really annoying because I get a whole bunch of notifications everywhere. They're like, make sure you fix Vanessa. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> and if you clear it on one, it clears it on one? Yep, yep, yep. Which is part of that synced data, right? So that's kind of what they're. They're emphasizing so that if you do one on one thing, it does it across the board on everything else because um, it's all in the cloud. Um, one of the other features, um, if you go into Cortana, um, you have to go into the notebook to get into the settings. You can disable Cortana altogether, so that may be something that you want to do. Um, you can, it says give you suggestions, ideas, reminders, and stuff, so you can turn that off. Um, the other thing you can enable is uh, Hey Cortana. Um, so if you have a microphone on your computer and you say Hey Cortana, then she should open up and talk to you. Now, it did earlier. It's not doing it right now because I think I've said Cortana so many times that she's like, no, he's talking about me. I don't need to respond until later. Um, so that's an example of the machine learning. Um, there's a respond best feature where you can say to respond to anybody, so if anybody's talking, then it'll respond to it, or you can set it to just you by learning your voice. So you can walk through this wizard to learn your voice, and she will give you some prompts like, hey Cortana, open this email. Oh, you see, by me saying hey Cortana, she opened up and she's listening right now to what I'm saying. Um, uh, uh, Something's uh, not right. Yeah. Okay, I can <laughs> again in a little bit. I know. Um, so, uh, so anyway, um, you can get it, you can program it for just your voice or to listen to any voices. Um, so, it's taking a little while to go through that. Uh, taskbar tidbits, you can see at the bottom where it says ask me anything. Sometimes it will come up and it will say, um, would you like to search for restaurants like at around noon? or something like that around lunchtime. So it'll start giving you little tidbits and tips um, throughout your experience on Windows 10. Um, again, it's using, it uses Bing, so you can open up the privacy, um, change the privacy settings and open up and learn more about it. So pretty cool, um, but it can be a little creepy sometimes. So you just kind of have to be aware of what you are giving and, and what, you're, um, what you're doing because she's constantly, constantly learning. And so when, you, when you're experiencing or when you're walking through all this, think about that. Think about how we're going to deal with that. You know, think about what we should do as a district. How should we manage that? How should we allow that or enable that? So think about that kind of stuff. Um, do you all have any questions on Cortana? Because that's pretty much it. Can you do that for your Android phone? Mm -hmm. Right now, Cortana is available on Android in preview. Um, it's been mentioned that it is coming for iOS. Um, the interesting thing about Cortana is that she's going to be 
on at least on Android, she'll be a little more deeply ingrained mm -hmm. into the operating system since Android is open source. Obviously, Windows 10 and um, PC and mobile, she's deeply ingrained into, into the OS, so you can do certain things and she'll um, she'll be integrated there. With Android, Android's a little more open source, so Microsoft has some. Um, they, have, they can take advantage of some of the actual operating system features. It has been mentioned that it's coming to iOS, but obviously iOS has Siri, and they're going to keep, it's a closed platform, so they're going to keep her Siri more for day-to-day -day operational stuff in iOS, but Microsoft is trying to get into that realm. Um, so she'll still be a search feature, she'll still be a personal assistant. You can do things like reminders and stuff like that, but you can't do actions like, um, use Google Maps to find this and do open this application and do stuff like that because you have to be integrated to the OS to do that. So um, in Windows 10 you can do that, in iOS you cannot, it's not even in preview right now, it is in preview for Android and the, you'll see a, little, a lot more development. Um, as a matter of fact, I don't know how many of y'all are Android fans, but Cyanogen mod, do y'all know about Cyanogen? So you know about Cyanogen, okay. Um, they are, um, they're known for rooting devices and then customizing Android devices at a very high level, a very detailed level. Um, and they've actually taken Android and customized their own version of Android and they're gonna be releasing it and Microsoft is working with that company to uh, make uh, Fortana the, um, I guess, the premier digital assistance and great uh, assistant ingrained into that OS. Um, so it's very interesting what uh, Microsoft is doing as far as cross-platform support and burning their services to other devices and other platforms. So, good question. Does it really compete with Siri? I think Cortana is a little bit better than Siri. Um, Siri is a little cut and dry. Uh, Cortana has a little bit more color to her, I would say, where she can. Um, she's a little more uh, personable, and she's she knows a little bit a little bit more. Um, I think that. The, I think what I think the powers, you know, with being powering uh, Cortana and with Azure and everything that Microsoft is doing right now. Uh, she's talking. Uh, I think there's a lot more power than what Siri has behind her. Um, so uh, I think right now they're very on par with Cortana being a little bit above, but I, I expect Cortana to soar a lot higher than Siri. But we will see what Apple does. Uh, Miss Azure and everything that Microsoft is doing. I said that. Um, okay. I'm trying to think. Um, you can turn her off. Also, you can turn it off in the taskbar. If you right click on the taskbar, um, you can. Well, maybe you can't. Okay, on my screen, I can say Cortana. Um, and if you do it on your taskbar, um, once you actually enable her, it might say search right now because Cortana is disabled, but once you actually activate her and enable her, then it will switch to Cortana and then you can make her, uh, you can have that search bar, you can see just the icon like this right here, or you can see nothing. So you do have some flexibility as far as how you want to utilize Cortana. Um, so I did mention that Cortana is um, integrated into various applications. Uh, I'll talk a little bit more about what it what it is for Edge, but Cortana is integrated into their browser. And you'll start seeing more and more Cortana integration in various applications. Um, I think one of the first ones was the uh, New York Times or something, their Windows 10 app. You can search for news articles and stuff like that through Cortana um, utilizing their app. So you'll see a lot more apps coming out with uh, Cortana integration. So, pretty cool. Uh, this is one of the features that does require a Microsoft account, but what I'm hoping is that you just need your Azure, your, your Office 365 account. So um, we we had, I think Cindy was here last time, and she couldn't add a Microsoft account for whatever reason, but Cortana still worked even though she had her, she had her 365 account. So I think that is starting to flourish. So pretty cool. Questions on Cortana? Okay, next is Microsoft Edge. Uh, I have a little video because they can explain um, Edge a lot better than 
um, if I can. But you'll notice that there's a new logo, right? It's not Internet Explorer, but they keep that blue E. Why do they keep the blue E? Because it makes it look like Internet Explorer, so it's not a complete jump ship from their roots. Um, and that's to help users um, kind of be familiar with, with what, what, what they're getting into. Um, it is a universal app. It is a modern app, so um, it works across all devices. Um, it'll work on your phone, desktop, um, all that kind of stuff. You will notice that it's a flatter design. Um, so it's a little gray, almost, uh, the colors and everything. You don't have a lot of personalization um, with it. Um, but it's in it's like it's it's continuing development like at a very very high rate. Um, so a lot of the newer builds have new features with Edge, and they'll continue to develop that both separately and with new Windows 10 builds. Um, the reason they called it Edge um, was because it uses the Edge engine versus the Trident engine that IE used. So um, the Trident engine was developed way long ago, um, and it was meant, I, and he kind of explained it yesterday, maybe you can help me explain how um, IE works a little bit better with older applications, but Microsoft had developed their um, their browser, they defined certain standards, and developers developed with that in mind. And then came Google Chrome and Firefox, which, came, which adopted a more universal um, platform that developers utilized, okay? And so where, that's when IE started falling short, um, but because these developers developed for IE solely, then you have certain um, applications. And I think about things like David Moore stuff, like Cognos Reports. It only runs in IE because that was the development that the school did. It only applied to IE. Um, so it doesn't work as well in Google Chrome and Firefox. Um, so IE has been kept around for compatibility reasons for applications like those. So that's where I'm saying that Microsoft is continuing development for IE, but only in security senses. Um, they're gonna continue to release updates and bug fixes for it, um, but as far as new features and everything, they're done with it. Um, so the Edge engine is a more um, modern um, engine for a browser, and it, it, it pertains more towards the code that developers develop for. Am I saying that right? Uh, yeah, he was big on saying that, you know, I.e., I would call it feature book, yep. based on things that are not industry standards. To industry do certain standard. things. That's what I'm thinking. And that they're trying to go back and say, okay, we're just complying with the industry standards right. that ours looks just like. Like right now, one of the big industry standards is HTML5, right? And where IE was the big one that supported Silverlight. Well, now, like Edge doesn't support Silverlight. So you're going to find different plugins and things that are not industry standard that don't work in Edge because it's not industry standard standard that it was only developed for IE. Um, so um, I can show you really quick, I have y'all kind of saw Edge up here, but what's neat about when you come across a application or, or a website that needs IE, then you can come click the three little dots and you can say open with Internet Explorer. So they quickly give you a chance to switch back into something else um, without having to go find Internet Explorer copy the web address, paste it, go there, re-sign in, stuff like that. So um, it's, they've at least tried to make it a little seamless there. Um, so you'll see more on that. Um, again, there's deep Cortana integration. Um, I can show you in the exercise. You'll see it, um, but I'm going to go ahead and show you. If I go, I've got LSA Burger on my mind. Um, <laughs> and you go there, you'll notice the first thing she says is I've got directions, hours, and more. So if you click her, She's gonna scan through this site and she's gonna tell you where it's at. She won't, if you wanna call, you can call directly um, to the restaurant. You can get directions, you can get the menu. Again, it's integrated with Yelp where that most of that information resides. Um, you'll get the Yelp reviews here and the photos and stuff like that. So it's pretty cool. Um, in addition, if you just find a random address somewhere, then you can right click and you can say ask Cortana and she will actually put it on the map and you can continue to go. So, pretty neat. Um, so you'll find where various, um, where Cortana is integrated throughout there. Um, the other thing is, the other feature is web annotations. It's called to make a web note. And what you can do is you can actually take a pen and then you can start like drawing all around this stuff. Now, where's a great use case for this? Especially in education. 
Promethean boards, right? Where you have a pen and you want to do something and they want to make a note somewhere or they even want to highlight something right here, then they can go do that with their interactive projectors and pens, stuff like that. Um, so that's very, very cool. And I think that um, right now when you do that, it's not, it looks live, um, but when you save it, it'll take like a screenshot of it. Um, and the website actually behind is not updating. So I think that's in the direction they're headed. Um, but right now it kind of takes like a, a little snapshot of the website. So uh, you can save it, you can share it, um, you can do make comments, I think. And then you know kind of, and that like takes screenshots or whatever, and then copy. So it's pretty neat. Um, then you can just exit out and it all goes back. Um, so there's that. There's one more feature that I want to mention, and it's not in your build yet. It's not in my build yet. Um, it's coming in November, uh, but Microsoft Edge will feature extensions, just like Chrome and Firefox do. Um, so I don't know how that's going to work yet. I don't know if there's going to be a certain extension store, if it's going to merge in with the Windows Store yet, how it's going to work. But um, Edge is going to support extensions. Um, so just know that that's probably coming in November. That's what it's been um, rumored, at least. So um, there is one video that I want to show you really quick about Edge, because it explains some other features that are coming. Uh, and it's a cool video. It's a promotional video for Edge. That right there where the tapped previews, that is coming in a later version, supposedly in November, so it's not in there yet, but they're working on it. Okay, um, there is one thing that I was going to show you all and try to find it. Um, that you can have a little bit of fun with it. And there's a, there's a, um, if y'all have ever watched an Apple Keynote, um, you know that you have to be open in Safari. You know, Safari allows you to watch an Apple Keynote. Well, actually, the past um, Keynote, you're able to watch it in Edge, which is a great uh, testament to how much development and, uh, that Microsoft is doing to be cross-platform and allow um, work with everybody on every platform. Uh, but what was cool about it was because you can make web annotations. Then when Joni Ive, you know, who's the designer of iOS, he goes and he talks, then you can like draw a little mustache on him and make fun of him and stuff like that. So it's kind of interesting <laughs> that they allowed that um, because that went crazy across the internet. Um, the other thing that I wanted to show you really quick, and I'll, I hope it works, is I've had hit or miss success with this, is if you type in the address bar just weather, then it'll actually come up and tell you the weather. So it's kind of neat, um, various things like that. So that's an example of the Cortana integration. Um, there's also a reading list that's built in. Um, so if you read like news articles and stuff like that, and you're like, oh, I, I need to read this article, but I don't have time, you can quickly add it to your reading list, so you can go back and visit that later and whenever you want to read that when you, whenever you have time. So that's kind of neat that that's built in. Um, there's also a, um, let me see if I can get, what's, who, who's a, who's a news article? Probably here uh, If you click on an article, there is uh, a, if I can find it, there's a reading view. I forget where it's at. It's not enabled, it's right there. Um, 
But the reading uh, view will actually take you into a more, you can see like the articles covered in images and ads and stuff like that. And if you click that little um, icon, it will actually bring you into a view that is just the text. And it has like a off-white background, almost peachy color. So it's a little easier on the eyes to read. So if that's annoying to you, then that's a new feature in as well. I gotta find a better example of that. Um, the home button is not shown by default. You actually have to go into the settings um, and do that. Um, and if you'll notice, um, it's not anywhere in the first part. You actually have to go into the advanced settings and it's right there. You can choose your home page. Um, this new tab browser, um, this is a new page that they've created. Um, so you can change that. You'll notice use Adobe Flash Player. Flash Player is built into the Edge or into Edge, so you don't have to worry about updating the plugins as often. Um, but because of security vulnerabilities, you can actually turn that off if you want to, um, which is kind of nice. Um, the whole do not track anything and um, save passwords is all in here. Have Cortana assist me in Microsoft Edge. If you don't want her to assist you, you can change that. Um, you can change the default address bar, the search engine um, to be being, it's defaulted to being, and you actually have to go to Google to add a new one in there. Um, so anyway, those are some of the exercises in the thing. Um, and then there's kind of that reading view style. Um, there's also a dark theme, which is cool, um, but it doesn't really serve any purpose other than looks. So that's Edge. Do you have any questions on that? I feel like I'm like talking about super fast. Uh, okay, moving on. Um, one last thing that I wanted to show you was the continuum feature. And continuum is a new feature that they've introduced in Windows 10. And it's all about um, using your device how you want to use your device. So Windows 7, great for keyboard and mouse, right? But with Windows 8, it was more meant for touch. So because this is like a hybrid of Windows 7 and 8, they've brought kind of the best of both worlds together so you can make it how you use it. Um, I have a couple of videos that will highlight uh, what that does. Um, but essentially, and you, you can see it with tablet mode, when you enter tablet mode, your start screen goes from just the normal screen like this to an expanded version. Um, of the kind of like the Windows 8, um, it's all completely. Um, your screen is full with the with the start screen, um, and you can't actually exit out of it. You can't get into the desktop um, once that once you're in tablet mode. Um, so uh, I think that's going to continue to be worked on and developed. Um, but it's interesting because you'll notice that the icons even in your taskbar will actually separate apart from each other so that it's more touch friendly and not so close together where it's hard to touch. Um, so you'll see some different features like that. Um, what's cool is like if you have like a surface where there's a detachable keyboard or mouse, when you detach the keyboard, it will prompt you and say, oh, you don't have a keyboard attached. Do you want to enter tablet mode? And it'll prompt you for that, and then you can change your settings based on like ask me every time, or just do it automatically. Um, and it'll change your start screen. It'll make all of your applications maximized, um, stuff like that. So I have a video to highlight that because it's kind of hard to project and show you. Um, that is continuing for phones. So there's no sound in this, but I want you to kind of watch. Um, He's showing that the start screen is normal. When you open up an uh, application, it's minimized. It's not minimized, but it's not completely full screen maximized. And then when you detach the keyboard, do you want to enter tablet mode? You say yes. The app becomes full screen. The taskbar expands. And then when you click on the start button, then you get the full screen start menu. So that's kind of the features of Continuum. Um, when you open every application from there on, it's full screen, and you can do whatever you need with your tablet. That's how it is. Um, but then you'll notice as in just a minute, he will exit out of tablet mode by connecting his keyboard again, and then it will say exit tablet mode, and when you exit, it'll revert back and everything's been lost again. 
but everything's retained. So pretty cool. Um, the other feature is for the thumbs, um, and it's kind of cool what they're doing with this. This is a longer video, and there's a lot of sound. Um, but kind of listen this to it and see. Like your stuff when it's this is not it. features. Something is auto -play. covers using Windows 10 with a keyboard and mouse. Oh, um, We're excited. So to just this is Joe Belfiore. He's the vice president in the phone division, um, which has kind of been migrated to the operating system. You'll be able to carry but a new phone device in your pocket, and then at any time connect it to a mouse, keyboard, and larger screen, and unleash a PC experience almost just like the one you get from a full PC device. So let's say you're on the road and all you have with you is your phone. And your company has touchdown spaces where people can drop in and use full keyboard, mouse, and screen. You simply connect to your phone and then your Outlook mail experience, which you use on the phone screen all the time, now scales up to be a full PC-like experience. You can use the mouse and keyboard. You'll see all your folders on the left. You see all your messages in the middle. You can preview them on the right, and when you reply, you're using the full power of Word, also built into your phone. All your keyboard shortcuts will work the way you expect. You can get work done very effectively using your phone like a PC. You could also imagine you're on vacation and you're going to connect your phone to the TV screen in your hotel room. Now you have a way to show those vacation photos that you've been taking, or you can use the dual screen capability to let your kids watch a video while you're catching up on your email or text messages and they're not interrupted. Now that you, you might wonder about some of the hardware, details so. here. Well, because Windows 10 shares common technology between the PC, the Xbox, and the phone, we have common code that knows how to connect devices wirelessly, like keyboards and mice. So that's already there. And with new parts from Qualcomm, we have processors that can drive two screens separately in these new phone devices. And so that's how we enable the phone screen to work independently from the PC screen. And the whole story comes together because of the universal Windows platform, where software developers, including Microsoft for apps like Excel and Outlook, are writing apps to Windows that can scale from a phone device up to a PC. When you run one of those apps on your phone device with a big screen, it looks and works just like it would on the PC. Other companies have built products kind of like this, but it's not the same. In those cases, you have a phone running phone apps that's docking to a keyboard and mouse, but those phone apps were never designed to work with a mouse, keyboard, and large screen. With the universal Windows platform and Windows 10, software developers are writing their apps for the PC and for the phone. And when those apps, including apps like Word, Excel, PowerPoint, Outlook, when those apps are run with a mouse and keyboard, they work exactly the way the user would expect. This continuum for phones feature requires new special hardware capabilities which will be built into phone devices that will ship with Windows 10 after it's available this summer. We believe this enables the vision of the phone in your pocket with your data and your apps being able to light up any mouse, keyboard, and screen wherever you go, giving you the full power of a PC experience. Okay, so that, I mean, that's what that means great. Is that's like um, four phones, which we really don't have a use case for, but I want you all to be aware that this is kind of the feature that Microsoft is going for with this continuum. So just know that that's, that is a thing. Uh, so, do you have any questions? Because that's it for this part. Okay. With the Windows, like if you had a Windows phone, mm -hmm. like Windows 10, mm -hmm. and you had a Surface, Will your Surface get your messages, like how an iPad gets your, I, your iMessages? I think you can set it up that way. I'm not running Windows 10 on here yet because it hasn't been released, but, so I can't say for sure, but I think that's kind of where they're going with it. So I think so. So if a teacher had that. a Windows 10 phone, then would it also come to her PC? I think they can I think they can set it up that way if they want to. I don't think it's by default. I think you can just make that happen. So. Uh, I was going to say something. Something else. Um, the office applications he was uh, highlighting there, those are the actual apps from the store. They're not Office 2016, 2013, on your desktop, the full blown desktop version. Those are actually apps. So you kind of notice they're a little bit lighter and there's less in there um, just because it's, a, it's an app, not the actual Win32 full blown deal. So 
uh, but pretty cool nonetheless. So anyway, with that, I guess um, if y'all want to do lab two, um, there's it's it should be fairly quick. Um, and I can't remember if there's anything I need to say on that or not. So if y'all have questions, just let me know. Um, and just really, and I guess really the big thing I want to say is while you're doing this, just be thinking about how how we can utilize these features, how maybe we shouldn't be utilizing these features, that kind of stuff, so that we can make the best decision possible for us. So. Is it all or none? Is it all or none what? Like, so if we have Cortana activated, would it be for all users? Like, would teachers be able to use it and students wouldn't be able to use it, or is it all or none? I think we can, we can segregate that. 